Good morning, class. This is the last which we were doing in the chapter 18th century India. We come on to the Peshwas. Now we know the last of the Maratha rulers, that means the son of Shivaji, who was known as Sambhaji. He ascended the throne, but he was very weak ruler and he could not sustain the entire Maratha, Maratha empire. And he was working under the able guardianship of a Brahmin minister and he was called the Peshwa. But since Sambhaji was not capable, this Brahmin minister, he took over the power. Peshwa, he took over the power. And then the Marathas were ruled by the Peshwas. Now the period from 1713 to 1761 AD was the time when the Peshwas controlled the Maratha empire. By, in 1713 AD, Shahuji appointed Balaji Vishwanatha as the Peshwa or chief minister. Please underline Balaji Vishwanatha, underline Peshwa. And the other meaning of Peshwa is the chief minister. He was an able minister and helped Shahuji to establish control over the, the smaller Maratha Sardars. In course of time, he concentrated all power in his hands. The king became a figurehead and the Peshwa became the real decision maker. So with the coming of time, the passing of time, the Peshwas gained all power and it was under them that the Maratha empire shifted from the rulers to the Peshwas. Among them, the first was Balaji Vishwanatha. Please underline his dates and his name, 1713, 1720. Balaji Vishwanath took advantage of the weakness of the data Mughals to extend the boundaries of the Maratha kingdom. He forced the Mughal ruler to return all the territories which had earlier formed a part of Shivaji's kingdom. Besides, Shahu was also given the right to collect Chauth and Sardes Mukhi, of six provinces in the Deccan. So though Vishwa, Balaji Vishwanath had taken over all the powers, but he did not neglect Shahuji. He still allowed him to take Chauth and Sardesh Mukhi, the two taxes, one fourth and one uh, tenth of the producers. And in the Deccan, he was given six provinces and to rule also. So basically the power was in the hands of Balaji Vishwanath. After him, the next Peshwa who took over was Baji Rao I. Baji Rao I succeeded Balaji Vishwanath. He led many campaigns against the Mughals. The Marathas conquered Malwa, southern Gujarat, and parts of Bundelkhand. Towards the south, the Nizam of Hyderabad was defeated and forced to grant the right to collect taxes from some provinces of the Deccan. Baji Rao I also captured Salsat and Basin from the Portuguese. So it was Balaji Vishwanath who was followed by Baji Rao I, who was a very able ruler. He was also a Peshwa and he conquered the following parts. Please underline Malwa, Gujarat, parts of Bundelkhand. He even captured the, the south area which was under the Nizams of Hyderabad and he also captured Salsit and Basin which was a Portuguese territory in India. The British just like British had come as trading units same had the Portuguese from Portugal they had come and they had also come as trading units and they were establishing their feet in these two places called Salsit and Basin. So it was him who went and captured it. After him was Balaji Baji Rao. Balaji Baji Rao was the next Peshwa after the death of Shahu in 1749 AD. He became the leader of the Marathas. He shifted the capital from Satara to Pune. That is Pune. During his reign, the Maratha armies reached as far as Bihar and Orissa in the east and Delhi and Punjab in the north. 
the kingdoms of Mysore and Hyderabad were forced to cede territories and pay tribute. Under him, the Maratha power was at its peak. Now, Balaji Baji Rao, he was the next one. His reign was from 1740 to 1761. It was this time that Shahuji died. And in, during this time, Balaji Bajirao took over as a king, as the leader of Marathas. And he captured a number of places. He shifted his capital to Pune. From Satara, it was shifted to Pune. Then they captured Bihar and Orissa and even Delhi till Punjab. They had tried, and also the kingdoms of Mysore and Hyderabad. Mysore and Hyderabad, do you remember? Mysore was under Tipu Sultan and all, and Hyderabad under the Nizams. You remember, children? So these were the places which were also ceded by the Marathas under the able leadership of Balaji Baji Rao. Then, in the end, the third battle of Panipat, 1761 AD, the Marathas became weak after their defeat in the third battle of Panipat in 1761 AD. This battle ended the possibility of the Marathas establishing an all India empire. The various Maratha chiefs broke away and started ruling over small areas. The battle of Panipat also gave an opportunity to the British East India Company to consolidate its power in India. So the third battle of Panipat gave us a finishing blow to the Maratha kingdom, where the king the Marathas were put an end, their power was put an end, and the East India Company came as a, who, which had come as a trading unit, now tried to establish its power as a British company, not only as a trading unit, but also as a governing unit. With this, we come to the end of this chapter. I would like you all to do the question answers and finish off any pending work that